Hello and welcome. As we are celebrating Heritage Day across South Africa, we thought it would be appropriate to make use of some local ingredients and making something we all love to feast on, fried chicken. The first one's going to be our Marzi, also known as Mars, and the second one is going to be Six Gun Spice. Now, I don't think Six Gun Spice is known as a local ingredient, but it's pretty easy to find, and we thought it would be fun to use it as it is a bry spice. And if we read closely, we'll see the label here says that it contains MSG, which is not officially part of the 11 herbs and spices, but definitely features on the ingredients list. You can use the attached recipe for the quantities, but we're going to need dried thyme, dried basil, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, white pepper, black pepper, cayenne pepper, salt, and our six gun spice. For the observant out there, you'll see that these are only 10 herbs and spices. So we're not making the Colonel's chicken here today. Remember, it's South African fried chicken. So we're going to take a small container or a medium container and we're going to combine these. Then we're going to use a whisk to mix it all together and to ensure that the ingredients are evenly blended. We now need to divide this up equally. Using a measuring device, I'm using a tablespoon here. Just divide it up one by one, ensuring that they are roughly the same amount. If it's not exactly the same amount, don't worry about it too much. It's not going to make too much of a difference, but try to get it as close as possible. So I'm using a tablespoon here, one in the one side, one in the other side. Once there's too little left at the end here, we're simply just going to pour it in and just divide it up as equally as possible. And here you can see our spices. We're going to put these aside. We're going to move on to our next step. Next up is our chicken. So you have a few options here. You can either debone your own chicken, as I'm going to show you here, or you can buy some of these pre-portioned pieces. I would recommend going for darker type of meat, but we are making fried chicken, so we're gonna end up using the entire chicken. First off, I'm going to take the chicken. I'm going to just remove a little bit of additional skin here. Our first step is going to be to remove the wishbones. The wishbones run at the top of the chicken throughout the breast. You can see indicating here, here's the top of the breast, and I can show you where, exactly where the wishbone is running. We're going to take a small little paring knife, and we're going to make an incision at the top here, exposing the wishbone. When you start pulling out the wishbone, you'll see that it's most likely going to end up breaking we want to take it out in one piece but it's not always possible now if the wishbone breaks as you're taking it out remember to make a wish so there's one side of the wishbone is out i've made my wish right now and here's the other side of the wishbone also out now with the wishbone removed we can easily move on to the rest of it this technique is relatively easy to use because we're simply going to use a scissor taking a scissor and starting at the one side of the spine we're going to cut through all of the bones and run it up. This is an easy technique to get the spine out because most people have kitchen scissors and it's also safe to do in your hands. Whenever cutting bones always be very careful because you need to apply a lot of pressure a lot of the times and the knife could slip. So using scissors this can be avoided and you can just run the knife up there. These are general kitchen scissors. You do get specific shears that are actually preferred for this and work a lot faster. The carcass can be reserved for stock or we can even make some sauce or gravy with it later on. So flipping it over, you can see that we now have a spatchcock chicken. This can be marinated or bright on the grill. Or if you're a lunatic, you could probably batter this entire chicken and deep fry it at this point. We're now going to split our spatchcock chicken into a half chicken. So each side now has breast, wings, thighs and drumsticks. We're making a 10 piece chicken here today, not just an 8 piece. So now we've separated the leg quarter from the wing and the breast. First we're going to finish up the leg quarter and we're going to break it into the drumstick and the thigh. There's an articulation there, you can see that it is moving. If you find the articulation the knife will easily slip through it, so just cut until you find the cartilage. I'm just going to take the knife here and run it through the cartilage and you'll see the breast will easily separate off here. Well, if you get stuck, just apply a little bit more pressure. So there is our thigh and our drumstick. Now we're going to move over to the wing. We're going to keep a piece of the breast meat on the wing as well, because we'd like this to be a portion on its own. There's a piece of the spine that we didn't cut off. I'm just taking the scissors here and removing it as it's just a big bony area. Now, as I was saying earlier, we're going to keep a piece of the breast here and I'm going to run the knife from the 
part of the drum mat down the chicken breast and there we have a portion of a chicken wing now because we're making a 10 piece we're going to cut the breast in half making two pieces so two pieces from the breast one wing one drumstick one thigh this is the one side of our chicken done we're now going to proceed to do exactly the same to the other side of the chicken as i mentioned earlier you can simply buy chicken pieces as well but if you would like to do this it's some good experience and it takes about five minutes to do in total now that our chicken is portioned we can move on to the next step so some of your best fried chicken is marinated in buttermilk but we're going to make our south african twist here we're going to use our amazi or our mars also known as mazi we're going to take your herbs and spices half of it and combine it with one liter of amazi this is going to act as a marinade and the chicken is going to be left in the fridge overnight with it have a look at the mars you can see that it is beautifully coagulated and that it is a nice thick mixture adding it yeah i'm just going to disperse the spice mixture well, I haven't added all of my liquid yet, and this is just to make sure that everything dissolves in here. The combination of the mazi with the spices is going to imbue some awesome flavors and also firm up our chicken a little bit. This is going to help with moisture retention and improve the tenderness once we serve it. With the marinade made, we now to need to add our chicken in here. Ensure that all of them are submerged below the line of the liquid and that we make sure that it penetrates all the way. We want to leave this overnight, at least 24 hours in the marinade to ensure that it penetrates well and that we can get all the benefits of marinating our chicken in Amazi. Ensure that it is submerged below the liquid. We're going to wrap our bowl here. You can also use an airtight container with a lid. We're going to place this in the fridge overnight. It's the next day and we're now ready to fry our chicken. In front of me yeah, I've got flour, corn flour and our spice mix. This is the half that was left over from the day before. In a large container, this could also be a baking tray, combine the flour, corn flour and the spice mix together. This is going to form the outer coating of our chicken. We luckily don't need to add any eggs or anything further except all of these. Now the fl flour is a normal ingredient for the coating. The corn flour is going to give us a crisper texture on the outside to make something more resembling extra crispy fried chicken. So combine these together and ensure that they are well blended. It's now time for the chicken to be added to the flour mixture. You can see it's stood over here and it is well coated. The marzi is very thick and it's going to give us a nice thick coating. Make sure that all the little pieces have been marinated. If there's any dry spots like over there, just make sure that you add a bit to it. Now we want to flour all of our chicken at the same time and leave it in this flour to suck up as much as possible. Because the mixture is so thick, it's going to take some time to hydrate. So don't rush this part. You can complete this at least half an hour before you start frying because you want it to suck up as much flour as possible and to form a nice thick coating. So keep transferring the pieces into the flour mixture here. You can see that space is going to become a concern. You don't want to overcrowd this. You can also do it in batches of five and five if you have a smaller container and then place them in a third container. But what you'll see is as you put this together and take it out that they're going to start hydrating more and more and forming a thicker and thicker coating. Because my container is this large, you can see I fit everything in. What I'm now going to do is going to take the flour and start throwing it over the chicken. I also splash some of the liquid into the flour, creating some more crusty bits. But trust me, there's going to be more than enough coating around here. So I'm creating these little piles on top of the chicken, which is going to coat the chicken more and more, forming a thicker crust. And our chicken's ready to go into the deep fry. We're just going to allow it to sit and hydrate outside. Don't rush this part of it. You can heat up your oil so long. Going to take a large pot here with high sides, just from a safety point of view, and we're going to heat our oil to 140 to 106 degrees Celsius. Then going to gently slide our chicken into the oil and then fry it for at least eight minutes or until it reaches an internal temperature of around 80 degrees Celsius. You can see the temperature is hopping up here to 160 degrees. 
but it will come down quite quickly. If you're doing this in a deep fry, it would be perfect. However, most people don't have a deep fry at home, so a pot works just fine. Just make sure that you regulate the temperature by turning the heat on and off as you are busy deep frying. You can see that the pot has become less energetic as we've been moving along with time. This is because a lot of the moisture has been removed. Now, if you're worried about deep frying your own chicken that is going to be uncooked, I highly recommend that you invest in an instant read thermometer that you can simply read the core temperature. As mentioned earlier, it should be about 80 to 5 degrees Celsius, but anything above 75 degrees Celsius is also perfectly fine. You would like your breast lighter meat to actually be a little bit lower because this is going to end up with them being more tender. The thigh meat can be cooked to a high temperature because it's got more connective tissue and also higher fat content. Before removing the chicken from the oil, make sure that you have lined a container with paper towel to remove any excess oil that may have collected on the chicken. We're then going to keep the chicken in a low oven to ensure that it can stay warm for when we're ready to serve it. Now that we've reached a correct core temperature at around 8 minutes, you'll be greeted with this beautiful golden brown masterpiece of crispy chicken you see in front of us. We're going to keep making these in batches until everything is cooked and keeping it warm in the oven. And here we have one of the most beautiful sights in the world, a complete mountain of fried chicken that would probably beat anything you're able to buy locally. Have a look at that crust, it is thick, it is golden brown, you can just see all the herbs and spices jumping off there. On the side here we've got some chakalaka and some hot sauce served with it as well. Now the proof is in the pudding and you can just see the moisture dripping from the chicken. The Mars in the Six Gun Spice has definitely helped this recipe to make it a little bit more salt African but also improve on something that we've had so many times in our life. I invite everyone to please try this recipe and let us know of your results but for now I'm going to go and enjoy this chicken wing. Thank you for joining us.